And so, uh, moving on to Korea, what did you think of the conflicts in Korea at the time? Well, I was, again, I was in the audio, made picked up my records, and I had worked in the Royal Sussex Regiment audio room, so they put me into the audio room there. I was on the troop ship. I did basic training in the rifle company, but then on the troop ship they transferred me to the audio room, which is, as you realise, that is the um, Britannia office headquarters, you might say. So, so we had to work like during the day, typing out things and passing messages around. And night time we'd have, not have duty, take turns of being duty. Any messages coming in, they had to take them down and pass them on to brigade or whoever it was. And on top of that, we do we do guard duties around the camp as well. So it was, we were quite busy. Some of the people thought we were skivers, but we weren't. We worked harder than a lot of them actually, because we do guard duty, but then we'd have to do the full day's work the next day. So. In the UAV, had a few hours sleep. You had to carry on as normal during the day. Did you think it was necessary for Britain to get involved in Korea? Oh yes, I think so. Because at the time, from the history point of view, I mean, the, the um, communists were taking over a lot of places. And that was the threat. And if 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 North Korea got away with conquering South Korea, that would take other places as well in the, the East, Far East. We, we, I'm not saying that we understood it at the time, because in fact, I think when they, when we were in Egypt, what happened is they, um, they wanted people who had, any soldiers who had at least 15 months service to go and age 19, they wanted volunteers to go to, to other fuselers, go to Korea. Well, we didn't really know where Korea was, never heard of it. In fact, I think we didn't realize the war there. But uh, all my friends were putting their names down, so I put mine down, which is something you tell me, never, never volunteer, but we did. And that's why we got transferred. About 30 of us came back. But um, no, I, I didn't regret that either. It was, it was quite an interesting service. So going abroad was something interesting, because in those days we, we didn't go abroad anywhere. I mean, going to Scotland was abroad to us. And so, uh, when about did you arrive in Korea? We arrived in Busan, in, it's now called Busan, in uh, July 52 and we were taken straight away by train to the north towards the front line really and um, I think they had when well, I was in the order room so we were straight away had to, we had a mobile truck and a tent which we had, well, I said a big, big marquee which we had to put up ourselves and each time we moved camp we just had to take it down move to a new camp put it back up again all done within a day. But then the rifle companies and the other companies, the sport company, they went into the front line, I think, after about a couple of weeks, just to get used to where they were, and they took over from one of the other regiments who were already in the line. So we, uh, where I was in the order, we were about a mile, or I spent more than that, behind the lines. So although well, we could see what was going on, they were, they were so mountainous there, as we were quite away from it, really. So, what was the attitude of the locals towards you? Well, we didn't really see the people in the, in the villages and so on. In fact, because the war had been... Every time the, the battle changed, the people moved away. So we, we they had Koreans working around the camp, locals, but they, they, they didn't live anywhere near there. They just lived in the camp. In fact, the only time I remember ever seeing any villages was on the train going up to north. When we got there, there was nothing. It was, we just seemed to be in the wilds, in the middle of nowhere. In fact, Seoul, which was the capital, that was really de virtually demolished. There was hardly a building with a roof on it, I think, at the time. As we went through there. We never thought of it as the, the people in the towns, because we didn't see them. So, what was the climate like when you arrived? When we arrived, it was very hot. It was um, well, we'd, we'd walk around all day. We didn't wear shirts; it was just so hot. But we had to wear trousers and putties to. Get, and we said the danger of animals poking out trousers, so we were insects rather. So, but then, um, then it got in towards November time, I think, or maybe earlier. It it was the very rainy season, and it was thick mud everywhere, and boots get caked with mud, and you're walking on it. Then we got to the winter and it got bitterly cold. 
and it was down to minus 30 degrees centigrade at times. So, was, and then we got used to that as well. And then I left in April, so by then it was back to the spring again. It was improving. Do you think the uniform you issued was suitable for climate the year around? It was for, for us, yes. But because time we got there, the ward started in 50. We didn't get there to 52. By then they'd got the equipment. In the winter we had parkas, which are like fur-lined clothing, which well, it's zip trap and so on. It's quite com comfortable. I think the first people went there in 50. They went from Hong Kong. They just wearing battle dress. Well, that was no good for the winter. I mean, it was just it was bitterly cold. But, you know, just it, and we don't have winters like that over here. And so, um, what company were you in? Well, I was in what well, HQ company really. I did my basic training in um, A Company in England that was. As I was and on the trip show I was transferred to the audio room. They, they needed people in the office there. There were only about five of us. But they had people who had two had to have five people who had been clerks in Civic Street I suppose. And then you I worked in an audio room before so I knew the ropes really. So that was that's it's part of HQ company. Though they have got their own HQ company office as well. But audio room is really the company office, the, the battalion office you might say. I think we had the adjutant with us, he was in charge of us and one of, one of our class would be at a, what they called AH Long, which is at the front line with the uh, the CO. So we were sort of within that sort of level of officers really. We weren't any better than the others, but it was just that they had to have an office for the whole battalion, and that was what we were. So what do you, you like done? What what did your duties involve? Um, I think they called me audio room typist. I've never been trained as a typist, just one finger really. But we used to have to type out any orders that had to go out to anywhere. And again, uh, we used to get phone messages coming in. If anyone was wounded or killed, they'd come through to us. And we had to pass it back to brigade so that... We could get, get the message back to England to let the no next of kin know as soon as possible. So that might come even during the night, we'd get called up, they'd take turns being the duty clerk and various th things like that. Any orders had to be typed out. We used to copy them on the old cassette machine in those days. No, it's not like modern things with the computers, it was quite hard work really. And they'd type them onto a skin, which then you put onto a machine. and so rolled an ink roller thing over it. It printed out. Do you think you would have preferred to be fighting? No, I think I'll say uh, when I was in the um, when the first time I was going to the audio, I said I didn't want to go, but they said, "Well, you change my mind when we get to Korea." That was on the trip ship. But when I got there, I thought, "Well, I'm not a hero. <laughs> I'll stay where I am. There's no point in." I didn't know how I'd fare in, in a life of company. Although I, mainly was I knew the people I trained with them. So that's why I wanted to stay with them, but I don't know. I was alright where I was. Did you ever come close to any fighting? No, not really, no. I, I, we, we could see it where we were and we'd, we'd hear all the explosions going on, that sort of thing. And you'd see the traceable bullets flying in the air and that sort of thing when anything was going on, but um, we weren't, never anyone fired at us. We, we had to carry a rifle around with, with ammunition in it. Case we were attacked, and if it had been, see, by the time we got there, the war had become more static. I think more like the first war, like trench warfare. If it had been more of an active war, then we would have been probably would have been involved. We could have been overrun, even though we're a bit further back. If it was moving quickly, but that's all we had to get used to being packing our stuff up quickly and, and moving. We had a truck that the adjutant used and. The RQMS, the old room, called my sergeant. They they worked in there, but the rest of us worked in a tent. Half it was living accommodation. We made it to that, and half it was the office. But we didn't have the beds. We made our own beds. When we first arrived there, we went round the hills, finding things like um, its old girders, and we found a lot of cable lying around. So we got back and tied these girders together, and and then made a a mesh over the top of it with a wire. That was our bed. Quite good. And so, uh, what happened when you left Korea? 
then we came back in the troop ship. That was about four and a half weeks back to England, and I came to the tower, and after about four days we were demobbed. It was just before the coronation, so they were, we got demobbed a few days early. They wanted us out of the way before the coronation. I thought we'd be on it. <laughs> but no, that was it. We used to come, I'd go home every night, actually, from here, and then come back every morning early, spend the day here, and then eventually we'd discharged on the been a Thursday or something like that. Oh, we had to go to the TA unit then to sign up with them first. I had to go to the West Kents in Foots Cray or Smeary Cray and then just did the odd camps with them for the next two and a half years. And so were there any, when you, when you joined the TA, were there any aspects of being a regular army that you missed? Well, the, the, the discipline didn't seem to be there. They didn't seem to take you seriously. And it annoyed me. I thought we're, we we thought we'd been proper soldiers. And suddenly there were these people. They just, um, they, we had an exercise. I remember going on that. It's all set up really well. The, the idea was to uh, ambush the other group. And it was really set up well by by the officer we had. Then the person in front of it, it's supposed to be a veteran from Arnhem, I think. He just ruined the whole thing by firing before he's supposed to start firing. Now it's only plain soldiers, but. Uh, no, it just it just ruined it. I thought they're not taking this seriously. So that was it. <laughs> so what what job did you have when you weren't training with the TA? What job did you have when you weren't like doing the TA stuff? In the TA, well, we didn't. I was just in the rifle company then, as as an infantryman. I mean, like oh, in service, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I, I worked in the bank, Midland Bank. So I'd, I'd been with them before I went in the army for two for fifteen months, and then. Went back to after it. They had to take us back anyway, and uh, I stayed there for the next 40 years, I suppose, till I retired. And so, how do you think your time in the army affected you? Well, it gave me, I think, it gave me confidence in front with people. Somehow, I don't know. We seemed to grow up, I think, in that two years. Because I, I, said I wasn't directly involved in the fighting. You were near enough to it. You knew what was going on. And you, you no longer feel like being a boy anymore. You're grown up. You're a man. Sort of thing. That's what that's what I felt about it. And I, I think it was the same with all of us that were out there. I know employers at the time preferred servicemen who had been abroad to the ones who had stayed at home because they were going home every night. They did sort of do proper soldiering. I don't think. Oh, I quite enjoyed it. Right, thanks a lot for your time.